Okay. Hey, everybody. We are recording. Thank you so much for being on the call today. I am Felicia Guzelis. You may or may not know me. I am friends with this amazing woman, Stormy, astrologer extraordinaire. And <laughs> we wanted to bring you a combined call. We wanted to bring our two communities together today and talk to you about the Akashic Records, about how they can serve you, what they are what you can use them for. And of course, if we have time, and I'm sure we will, do some healing for you, answer some actual questions that you have about your path, your journey, what's going on in your life, see if we can help you with some healing. So I'm super excited to be here today, and I'll let Stormy uh, intro. Yeah, hi. So I know a few of you in here, and I don't recognize all the um, phone numbers, so I may know more of you than I see, but I'm Stormy Grace and I am an astrologer. I'm here in Colorado and this is going to be so cool because I think it's not often talked about the link between the Akashic Records and astrology and the blueprint that exists there. So there's a lot of options for help and for healing out here and for clearing out any places you may be stuck and also kind of moving towards undoing that karma. Cause I don't know about you guys, but when I like transition, I'm like, yes, I would like to be done with some things. <laughs> so this is a very like exciting time. And you know, this is what I get to do with my life and my day. So why not bring all of these other people in as well? It's a pretty cool experience. So I'm pretty pumped to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Before we get rolling into it, do you know if there's a way to make our video be the two main videos here. Maybe I just don't know how to do that. Um, speaker I view. Don't. Maybe speaker view. Let's try that. Click a button. So I hit speaker <laughs> view and now you're the main. Oh, I think what that will do is whoever is whoever's speaking. talking, it will put, there's no way to have a <laughs> side by side, huh? I don't think so. Not with the, not with the room being this, this big. I don't think so. Not with the zoom. Okay things to think about for next time. Yeah, Amanda <laughs> Amanda just said gallery view. Uh, we're on gallery view right now and it shows everybody's phone calls and then I, uh, I don't know. We'll have to look at that for next time, guys. Thanks for your yeah. patience. Okay, so guys, about the Akashic Records, I'm going to just get rolling like right into it. Also, we're going to be watching the chat window. So if you have any questions that come up, please feel free to put them in the chat. We'll get those answered for you. And um, as far as healing or things that are coming up for you, I would say let's wait for you to hear what I'm going to talk about on the call too, and just kind of see what comes up for you because things can change or sometimes I tend to answer questions before you even ask it to me. I may already answer it before I know who's asking it. So just stay present with the call and we'll open it up for questions sometime very soon. Um, but before we get rolling into that, I would love it if everybody would just kind of Feet down on the floor, uh, take a big deep breath in, just in through your nose to the count of four. Just centering our energies together, but also I want you to think about intentions. What do you want to get out of this call? Why did you sign on today? What do you most need to hear today that might bring you some peace? So just breathe in your intention. So the one thing I love about calls like this is all of our energies are going to pull together. And even if your question doesn't get answered directly, it's going to be answered in some other way. So if we don't call on you for a question, somebody else may ask your same question or I may provide a response or Stormy may provide a response that is exactly what you needed to hear today. So that's what I love about this, but just make sure you set those intentions and it helps us connect too. So if you're new to my work, I want to just take a couple of minutes to talk about what are the Akashic records. Um, it's a term that's becoming increasingly more well known over the last few years. And I know um, when I started doing this work back in 2014, I first started working with um, the archangels. So Archangel Michael just talked to me one day in a meditation and I had never done meditation before. It was my first meditation and the first time hearing an angel. And then I also saw him. And I know for me, it was kind of mind blowing 
um, I was just coming out of people use the terms awake, right? Like I was just kind of waking up to all of this and understanding that there's a universe out there that's doing something, but I didn't really know what that journey was or what it looked like. And when he first introduced me to the Akashic Records, um, it came through a course. So I actually um, enrolled in this course and one of the modules was, it said Akashic Records. And it was a short, I think like five or six minute meditation that showed you how to log in. I call it logging into the Akashic Records because we're accessing a certain energy field. And when I logged into the Akashic Records, uh, basically, I like fell in the front door <laughs> of the Akashic Records and my guide was standing there and I kind of got this look from him that was like, it's about time, right? Like I got this story, you know what it's like when your guides kind of look at you and it's like, oh, okay, you're finally here. Welcome. <laughs> like yeah. I got that kind of look and he didn't say that, but I was, I could feel like what he was saying. Right. So, and that's one of the ways our intuition talks to us. So um, ever since then, it's been this crazy journey that I've been on. So for almost four years now in May, it'll be four years that I've been in the, the Akashic Records. And what I learned, everything that I've learned about the Akashic Records, I've learned from the Akashic Records. So this training course that I referenced that showed you how to get into the records, that's all it did. It just showed you how to log in. And what she said, when you get in, talk to your guide and take a look around and go and ask questions. So there was like no training whatsoever. So once I was in there, I'm standing there and I have this guide looking at me like, what do you want to do? You know, what, Hey, you're here now. What are we going to do about this? And that started my training and I'm still learning about the Akashic records. And now I teach about the Akashic records. So what they are is an energetic space where you can access all of your soul's information. So your soul's blueprint. So we'll take a step back before you incarnate into this body that you're in right now, you sat down in the Akashic records with your guides with your life review committee, that's definitely another big call, but basically you have a committee when you've crossed over from your other lifetime before you came into this one, you had to do a life review and see, did you learn your soul lessons? Like, are there any things you need to repeat? They're gonna show you on a slideshow things that maybe didn't go so well, times you were unkind, and they're gonna ask, how do you wanna repay that karma, right? And in this lifetime, you're repaying some of that karma right now. And you're learning a whole new set of lessons. What the Akashic Records allow us to do is go in and see what is going on behind our experiences right now. So think about for a moment a big struggle that you're having. First thing that's coming up for a lot of people is money. Okay? Traction. I hear traction, like getting traction in your business, in your life. Are you wanting to meet somebody? Whatever it is, getting traction, moving in the right direction. So when you have something like that, that's coming up for you, you're able to access the Akashic Records and these are your own soul's records. It's in a big book. Like think about the biggest encyclopedia you've ever seen where you can log into certain parts of the book it's just opening the book and looking at certain areas and trying to figure out what the root cause is. And it's very easy to do that in the Akashic Records. You go in, you talk to them, you talk to your book or you talk to your guides and say, this is what I'm struggling with. What is the root cause of this and what can be done about it? Is there a way to shift the energy? And they will honestly answer you and help you do the healing on it. What I also love about them is it's not just the records. They, this is like a storehouse of information. So let's say you had somebody in your life that crossed over and maybe you didn't get to say what you had to say to them or you have some regret or guilt about it. You can actually go into the Akashic Records and speak to their soul and get healing from that. So just because they are crossed over doesn't mean you can't still talk to them. 
and you don't need to be some special person like don't tell yourself well i don't have that gift everybody has that gift it's just knowing how to access and it's like exercising your spiritual muscle right it just takes some practice sometimes and of course there are lifelong intuitives like they were born and they've been seeing angels and um we had that too but like i remember being a child and <laughs> seeing certain things and my parents were kind of like oh no it's it's nothing whatever that's the start of the suppression right so after that we have to reopen this on our own like step into it again and that's only going to happen when it's time right so just know that if it's still in the process of opening for you or you're new on this journey or whether you're seasoned intuitive or whatever, we all are born with those same gifts when we come in. And because we're born with those same gifts, just the way that I access the Akashic records, you're able to access them as well. They're there for your knowledge, for your information, for you to use them on your journey. So it's pretty amazing. Um, I want to give a minute to see if we have any questions before I just keep going with it. Does anybody have any questions about how the Akashic Records work or about anything I just said? Oh, I see. Um, I hope I say it right. Tanea. <laughs> I always mess up your name, girl. So no questions. If you do have any questions, pop them in the chat box and let me know. Um, why the Akashic Records are so important is they break the wheel of karma, okay? And that's the easiest way to describe it is you have patterns that you're repeating in your life right now that have been going on from childhood or maybe like it's possible you can't remember a time that you didn't go through what you're going through right now. Let's say finances. Let's say you've struggled financially your entire life. Like you can't remember a time when you've had more money than you know what to do with, right? That is a pattern that we can take a look at in the Akashic Records. So we can log into them and go, hey, listen, Stormy has this pattern of, I'm using you as an example. <laughs> Stormy has this pattern of financial XYZ going on show us the root cause. They're going to take us all the way back to the very first time that that happened. So we can understand what started this pattern. Like it might even be in a past lifetime. Like Stormy, for instance, could have a past lifetime where it's like money just wasn't readily available. And that was part of her journey in that lifetime. And maybe when she crossed over, she carried the burden, the weight of that financial issue into right now. So we go back to where it first started and we clear the energy on that and we bring that new energy because we're going to bring new energy into it all the way forward until now. And what happens is naturally things start to change because think of it like an anchor. When you drop an anchor and the belief that you have is the anchor, it's going to stay there at the bottom of the ocean floor until somebody lifts it up, pulls it out puts it back in the boat and goes, do we need this anchor anymore? Or is it just holding us back? Right? That's the way you look at it. It's just like, okay, we don't have to be bound by this weight that's continuing to hold us back. So the records give you a place to be able to review what's holding you back and clear it. And the same goes for anything in your life. I've been using money as an example because I know it's a lot of things right now that people are dealing with but that's not the only thing basically any question that you have can be looked at in the records and cleared so it's pretty incredible uh, i see we have some questions coming in okay let's see so what type of things were you seeing younger for instance that that my parents would say it's nothing angels <laughs> um, a lot of times I would just see a light in the corner of the room. And I know now where I'm at in my journey that if we see a sparkling light, that is, and it's not something obviously reflecting in front of you, right? But I would just be in a dark room and there would be like a light there. Um, and my, one of my strongest Claire's is Claire audience. So I could hear very clearly. And I remember as a child hearing things. And I would tell my parents and I'd be like, I heard X, Y, Z 
situation. And they would go, oh, no, no, no. Like didn't know how to describe it. So, and it, that's a pretty standard response unless your family is like really comfortable with that um, type of experience that you're having. So it's, yeah, it takes a little training, I think, on both sides. <laughs> I hope that helped, Natalie. Can you find out um, when a karmic cycle has ended by asking in the records? A karmic cycle is the same as a combo of a soul lesson. And it could be related to a soul contract. So for those of you that are new to these terms, soul lessons are things that you're going to learn throughout your lifetime. Some of them are very short. You might have a soul lesson um, regarding relationships, let's say, and so-and-so, Joe Schmo is going to come in and help you learn this lesson, and you're going to be with him for two years, and then you're going to transition out of this lesson. And it's, that's all dependent on you and how quickly you learn the lesson, right? So how in tune you are with yourself and your heart, and are you able to learn this lesson? The records cannot make you learn a soul lesson more quickly. They would be robbing you of a very important job. Um, in your journey. Like you, this is your experience. You're going to learn and grow from it. So even though we have difficult experiences, sometimes we're going to take however long we need to take to learn what that is. And the records can't transition that any faster either. It could also be related to a soul contract. So for instance, if there's somebody, you're destined to have a child, let's say, because we decide that before we incarnate as well you're going to have the child with a certain person. So that's a soul contract, an example of a soul contract. And you, I'm sure you all know there have been situations where you can look back on somebody in your life right now and go, what was I thinking? <laughs> right? Like we all have these moments of like, what was I thinking when I was with that person? But at the time you felt so drawn to them you were so in it, like you just couldn't imagine your life without this person. That was just part of the energy and the contract at that time. That was what you needed at the time. So that's what you drew to you. Um, and when it's a contract, like I'm saying, you're going to come together no matter what. I mean, you could be on opposite sides of the world and somehow you're going to meet because that's your karmic destiny. So yes, be, by looking at soul contracts and soul lessons, you can see when it's ending or if it's ended. And typically the, the Akashic records don't give very much weight to things that have ended. In other words, if something has already ended for you and you're asking the Akashic records about it, they're basically going to try to urge you to go like, stop focusing so much on this. Let's go in a different direction. This is what's going on for you right now. So they won't dwell on it. They'll help you understand it and then they'll want you to transition out of it. So think of them being kind of like a mentor. They're going to just basically help you um, move through things so that you're not dwelling on past situations. And that includes anything from a past lifetime. And this so, is how we see it in astrology as well. Because in astrology, whatever your karmic contracts and whatever you have to learn, you're going to spend this incarnation working on it. But there are all of these little points, just like Felicia was talking about, where it's like, okay, this thing is done. And when it's done, the thing is every single one of us, when it's done, we know it's done. You get a knowing and you do. It's funny because you'll try and go back and be like, oh, remember the situation? And it's like your being is like, ew, why? Like we're move on. <laughs> you know, it's a very specific understanding of it's done. And it's really kind of cool to see how that goes. And then in astrology, we can map the patterns of when you're about to really hit a super lesson from your records because it'll usually be in some kind of nodal return. And then you get like this spiritual enema and all of a sudden you, you get real busy real fast. So it's interesting to watch the work that's happening and getting these knowings along the way. Super cool. Yeah, it's amazing. And that's why astrology is one of my basic, like Stormy's my astrologer, right? So it's one of my basic... <laughs> 
things that's always in my life because I'm such a huge believer in what you do and about how like just learning through the years, how the planets actually are affecting our journey and how it relates to the records as well as when you are figuring out in the Akashic records before you incarnate, you are determining your birthday. You are determining your birth time because of what's going to be happening with the planets at that time and how they relate to your soul lessons and soul contracts. Yeah. So for me, it's just a given that I need to have astrology in my life because it's directly relating to my experience right now. Yeah. It's like the map. Astrology becomes the map. You have your contracts and you have your lessons. You're going to fulfill them no matter what. But astrology shows you the where. You know, it's the same as taking a road trip from one state to the other. You know you're going from Colorado to Arizona, but are you going to stop and see the world's largest dinosaur? Well, of course you are, you know, right? Like you have to. So astrology helps us to pinpoint some of these stops because our lessons will be the exact same lesson and it is dressed up as something else. And our humanity filters that as, oh, this is something different. And it's not. So it's a really cool little map that you get to use to go, oh, okay, here's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're never going to, just to echo this, you're never going to get out of that soul lesson earlier. So if you go back to your ex a hundred (laughs) times, you are going to go back to your ex a hundred times until you learn that lesson associated with it. And once, like Stormy said, I swear to you, once you learn that lesson, it's like suddenly somebody flipped a switch and you're like, I'm turned off. (laughs) Whatever this energy was, it's over. I'm done. And you will never look behind you again. And you've all been there in certain situations. Something has happened where it just was like done and you just never looked back. Yeah. Phone call 101. You're like, is not receiving this right. call. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it's incredible. And that's how, you know, even without looking at the records or even without looking at a, that's how, you know, just in your feelings, when you feel that and it's done, that's it. You're never mm-hmm. going to look back. You don't need anybody to tell you that it's just over. And it's almost just been from my experience, and I think you guys can mirror it, but it's like with certain situations, I will just sometimes even be walking into it going like this. No, like I intellectually know this is a terrible idea and my feet are just chugging us along. So it's like, I can't stop the fulfillment of what needs to happen. No. On the no. other side, that person, place, or thing comes to interact with me and I have this very visceral backing off from it. And that is what I'm going for. If it's not in my greatest good, you know, Mm -hmm. like, so it's, it's me. If we trust that gut intuition, if we work on these chakras, these things that everybody's teaching, we set ourselves up for some success here, right? Cause then we can trust the vibes that are coming and it's like, Oh yeah, no, thanks. I don't want to be there anymore. Mm-hmm. And so, wanting doesn't matter. I just want to put that out there. You cannot want your lesson and still have to go learn it. No. No, just to echo what you said too, because I had a situation like this recently where I was walking into it with my head shaking going, (laughs) no. And, you know, being aware of it, right, is like a blessing and a curse, right? Because I'm walking into it, like you said, and I'm going, no, 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 Felicia, like, don't, this is, you've been here before, like, but at the same time, my heart's going like this, like my heart's pulling me in and my body's going Ah, you know, like this, but I still kept walking because you know, there's something here for you. Mm -hmm. And no matter what, that draw is always going to bring you in. So how you approach that, just so you know, if you have something like this come up or is currently coming up for you, you have to approach it from a place of detachment. Mm -hmm. So walk in consciously. Don't be like me where I was like, ah, like I just didn't want to (laughs) go own it. Like walk in, right? Walk into it and say, I'm going to take this one day at a time. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's still okay and I'm having fun, et cetera, I'll, I'm going to be here. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So you just, that's the best way to approach it. I, at least in my experience, just walk in willingly because otherwise you just have this, I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it. I knew I shouldn't have done it. And that gets you nowhere. You're mm -hmm. just going to have now guilt and regret and resentment. Own it, walk into it and go, I'm going to be here as long as it's serving me. And, and as long is, as it's not, I'm out. And this is where it's so interesting to look at it from astrology too, because your different makeup is going to approach your lessons differently, right? Like we've got some people who are just very foolish. Just like, I'm just going to be here and I'm going to do this. And you know, then there's me and I'm like, no, I need some practical answers. Why am I here? Okay. And what can I do to get to the other side? And sometimes that means staying for a very long time until I get it. But you know, this is where the cool part of the personality comes up. But for every single person, no matter what the sign, no matter what the lesson, it always for me comes down to faith. You've got to move your feet as if you're doing purposeful, meaningful work in your own life. And the only way I think that we can do that is going, okay, whatever's happening here, I know that something bigger than me has got my back and I'm here on purpose. Mm -hmm. That's because if you're just out here walking blind, you do, we come into this repressive, depressive state where it's like, oh my God, I'm a wretch. I shouldn't have done this. And it's like, well, you were going to do it anyway. So <laughs> let's just move past that. Right. <laughs> Whether you shouldn't have is a different question. Right. Oh yeah. We always have free will choice. So, okay. Awesome. Sonia um, asked if, if you need to have your feet down on the ground, um, during the call, probably not. Um, I would say when we start doing healing, yes. So I hope that helps. Um, let's see. I got a private message here um, asking about the root cause of addiction um, or filling a void. Like, is the root cause filling a void, et cetera? Can it be cleared in the records? Root causes can always be cleared in the records. As far as what's the root cause of addiction, it's never the, it's not a standard answer. It just depends on what is going on for the individual's journey at that point in their life. Um, we all have addictions. Is it an addiction to love? Is it an addiction to making people happy? Is it an addiction to not being able to let go? Is it an addiction to making money, pornography? Everybody's got something, right? So it's just being aware of what it is and whether it's a healthy addiction or not. So addiction isn't always bad is what I'm trying to say. So it just depends on what the addiction is and whether it's serving you and not harming others at the same time. That's how we evaluate it. So it just depends on, on what that is. And in the astrology, mm -hmm. I always come back to wherever the escape is. I bring absolutely everything back to faith because the obsessive thinking of the human mind and the obsessive behavior always in what I've seen from the pattern come from trying to humanly fill what is divinely lacking. And that comes with some questions. What has made you so powerful that you feel like you can travel only intellectually and not divinely? That answering that question does a lot to shift whatever the addictive escapist behavior is. That's true. Absolutely. And I think um, when it comes to addiction, it's really important to know that it's not just a spiritual healing so it's not something that you only want to look at the records for. Addiction, like Stormy said, has to do with the mind. Now we're talking about the subconscious, mm -hmm. unconscious mind. What are the hidden drivers behind your behavior? Like I was talking about earlier at the first start of the call. What are your habits behind this behavior? Habits can be broken. If you are dealing with... Um, smoking, let's say, right? That's just a habit. In other words, you've trained yourself to smoke. And the spiritual part of it, which is the emotional part of it, is why? 
What are you missing that the cigarette is giving you? What's the enjoyment behind that? We deal with that first. But then we have to deal with the unconscious, subconscious mind. This is something that's driving your behavior and you don't even know it. Because if you knew it, you would get up in the morning and instead of unconsciously picking up your cigarette, which is what you do, if you knew what was driving your behavior, you would stop and ask yourself, is this the time that I usually smoke my cigarette? Do I want to smoke my cigarette today? No. Your unconscious behavior is driving it. So you're doing it on autopilot. And that's where habits come in and learning how to break habits. So it is possible though, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And to think that in any circumstance, whether it be addiction relationships, any of those things, that we can just live a five sensory life is not going to work. And it is usually the addiction that humbles and levels us enough, you know, gets us in that good, it hurts so bad fetal position that we start living a sixth sensory light. You've got to turn the headlight on. There's just not another way to do this that isn't terribly painful and destructive. That's just humanity. Mm -hmm. So everything pushes us back into this divine place of living. And however that translates for you or however you learn about it, that differs and we can see that in the charts. I could see that Felicia was going to not gravitate to being an astrologer, but towards the records or towards something like that. That's just the way that divine energy gets to speak to her, but it keeps her from doing a whole bunch of shenanigans that she would do <laughs> without some grounding. It's so true. Or sometimes I try to do the shenanigans, but I've learned by now that I should run it by the records first and the answer is usually no. <laughs> Absolutely. Or oh, yeah. in their terms, we don't advise that. <laughs> <laughs> right? You become accustomed to hearing no, and it actually is a celebration of humanity because I go back and I look over it and I'm like, that was a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've saved me from a lot, I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so awesome. Everyone's resonating with what we're saying. Great. I'm still looking at questions here, guys. Um, so does the draw mean you still haven't learned the lesson if everything else is telling you no? Does the draw mean, I don't know if I understand the question. Um, let's see. Oh, th being drawn to someone. I get it. Okay. So if you're feeling, I'm going to use a person in particular. Let's say you keep going back to your ex, right? And oh God, I've been there. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Stormy knows the details, right? Like I've been there where it's like, I know something should end and yet I just keep going back. And it took me quite some time to learn that it's just about honoring how I'm feeling right now. If I feel like I want to go back right now, then that's okay. What I lean on, like Stormy says about faith, right, is I'm leaning on the belief that Nothing is happening by accident and everything is perfectly timed. So even though I have free will and I could force myself away and still feel this really hard pull, I choose to walk back into it because I know when I'm done learning whatever I need to learn, it's going to just end. So if everything to answer your question, a lot of times everything has been telling me no, and yet I still feel that draw. And the way that I approach it now is I just go, let me sleep on it and see how I feel tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I put it, I don't say no, but I put it more on my back burner. And my back burner could be one day, it could be a month, it could be two months, but usually if I'm going that long, more than a couple of days, the energy starts to dissipate. It was just me not wanting to go into a grieving cycle. Mm -hmm. And that's about knowing one of your patterns because why I find that process uncomfortable. I don't want my emotions on display like that, right? That's my individual thing that I'm dealing with and have been dealing with, right? So for you, it could be different. You could, like Stormy said, we each have our own, like our personality is factoring into this and our own traumas and fears and things from our lifetime are factoring into the decisions that we're making as well. So for me, and what I advise my clients too, is like, sit with it. 
And one of the things I do is before I go to bed, I work with my subconscious mind. So last night, I, I give it an order before I go to bed. I'm basically like a drill sergeant. So like I talk directly to my subconscious mind and I go, hey, subconscious, I need an answer to this. Find me the answer on it by the time I wake up. And I guarantee you, just like I did this morning, I had an answer to my question. So just know that you can give an order to your subconscious mind, even if it's healing. Hey, I'm going to bed with this migraine. I don't expect to have this when I wake up. Figure it out. Heal it. Just straight away, tell it what you need, and it will get healed. Mm -hmm. And it could be letting go of a relationship. I need help with that. It doesn't matter what it is. Just give it an order every time before you go to bed. Absolutely. And it's so interesting because even if I don't interact with whatever the draw is, because I can choose to not interact, right? I'm not a choiceless, you know, mango over here. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that I've learned the lesson though, but it does mean that I get to choose how I'm going to continue to show up because I can tell you I had an X2 and it went on for a very long time and I would show up and run in there and then I would leave crying the grieving cycle and I'm not good enough, got to kick in. And it was the same over and over and over again until one day we had an interaction and I was like, oh, I'm going to not show up that way. Right. And I got to show up differently and I didn't, I still had to grieve afterwards because you touch on these core level lessons and you're going to grieve them. And then it started to look different, different, different. Now that lesson is still in place, but there's no interaction right now, but the lesson's not over. That's why the draw is still there. Right. But some of the little lessons, even along the way have been done because there are some things that are not a part of that non-interaction anymore, even in the energetic way. So yes, what, Ever we are going towards, we're going towards because there's a lesson there. I am not running at everybody's stuff because I don't have everybody's lesson. And having a lesson, I want to say this is not a negative thing. It is not. What the heck else would you be doing here? We have stuff to do, right? So it's not the end of the world. It's not all always comfortable, but there are positive lessons as well, right? Felicia said, you want to do a call together? And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, that's a great lesson. Oh, I get to learn this level of things. So having a lesson, I hope that's not heard or translated as something negative. We just have stuff to do. That's it. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And just to bring a choice into it as well, just to touch on that very quickly, because I want to take some questions from everybody. So start putting your questions in here. Uh, but just to touch on choice what I know about the records so far, and I'm always evolving with how much I know about the records, right? But let's say I continue to choose walking back into a situation, right? One of, because I'm in this situation right now, right? One of the things I told myself recently was, if I don't learn this with this person and get it right, right meaning it doesn't mean I'm going to be with this person, right means learn my lesson. That's what I mean by right. If I don't learn it with this person, I'm going to have to learn it with somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that's where choice comes in. Am I going to learn it with this person? Or am I going to choose to walk away and know that my lesson's probably not done? Because like Stormy said, that draw is still there, right? So we have that choice. We're not going to escape the lesson. That's not going to happen. <laughs> but I get to choose, do I want it to continue happening with this person or do I want to move on and let a different person come in and show me this? And there's no right or wrong answer. It's just going to transition when it transitions. Like, yeah, that's it. That's where the personality comes in too. I've had some lessons that were a little bit hard and they needed to be, they were hard. And I have had a person who is very abrupt try and give it to me. And I can't hear that way. And I chose to pass on that experience and yeah. the exact same experience. I mean, to the T came with a person who was able to present me that lesson with a lot more compassion and a lower voice. And in a way I had time to do it. So you see, this is where the shape of the personality also becomes an element of choice for us. I don't want to learn every lesson abruptly. 
I don't want to learn every lesson compassionately. When I was learning to do my business, the same very compassionate person was like, it's going to be okay. And I needed a gangster. I'm like, where is this abrasive person? I need somebody to, you know what I mean? So this is where we get to choose that. It's delicious. Yeah, it's, it's really wonderful. We have that free will. So I am looking at the questions. Let's see. What about a situation where those people, two different exes, um, are still on your mind often? Mm -hmm. Let's, uh, I'm just reading that through. There's something, is there something more to be aware of with this lesson if you're still thinking about them often? Okay. The mind is going to look for, I mean the subconscious mind, is going to look for a solution to fill a void. And your exes are familiar to you. So it's very easy for it to go to something it already knows, right? Because it's going to want to fill this need. So the first thing is getting in touch with what do you need? What exactly are you missing when you're thinking about them? What is it that you're thinking about? Getting to that core emotional reason of why that's happening is step number one. Step number two is retraining your response. And for me, with something like that, what I do is I literally, you guys might think I'm crazy, but I literally talk to myself. Like if I'm stuck oh, yeah. on, cause I've got Gemini problems, you know, like I get stuck <laughs> on my mind just overthinks. Like you don't even know. It just buries it into the ground. It's like six feet under. I've thought about it that much. And one of the ways that I've started to break that habit of overthinking, cause that's just a habit. It's something that I've done my whole life, right? One of the ways that I've started to break that is I tell myself, no, that's in my past. I'm not focused on that anymore. That's a thing of the past. And now I change my focus. But I found that once I tell myself that's a thing of the past, I'm not focused on that anymore. And I go and start doing something else. Our mind changes thoughts very quickly. Right. So if you're dwelling on that, try what I just said, like, just tell yourself, no, that person's a thing of my past. I'm moving on or I have moved on. Here's what I'm doing now. And just change your focus. Start, go write in your journal, go for a walk, go watch some TV, whatever the next behavior is, change it and do that every time. And I promise you, it'll only be a couple of days before you're like completely on a different topic whatsoever that you're thinking about. It doesn't take very long. But one of the important things is I tell myself, no, that's done. It's in the past. Let's look at this instead. I hope that helps, Amanda. And you can, this is where for me, I've seen some choice as well. Like I had the thing with the X and that was actually how I was able to start Stormy Grace. And my North Node is in Cancer and this person is a Cancer and I don't know how to act like a Cancer to save my life. And things kept coming up and I kept thinking, oh, I'm thinking about all of these romantic things with us. And you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Like, and I chose to take that and channel that into starting a business. So I moved every idea of romance and passion and sex and the future I wanted in intimacy and I created a business by learning to act like a cancer. So I kind of just acted as if. And it was a great use of that energy because after I started my business is when that tie between he and I became less and less and less because I didn't need his energy so much anymore. I'd figured out how to channel it on my own. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Yeah. Being in touch with your own energy and using it in a way that's constructive. I mean, even Stormy and I were talking about this before our call that today I just kind of woke up and I was like, right away I woke up and I'm like, I'm going to do this awesome call today. And then I'm taking the rest of the day off. Like literally, I think I told you, I'm just going to sit around and twirl my hair today. Like I'm not even going to watch TV <laughs> or do anything. I'm just going to just sit and yeah. do nothing. And I think that's what's important is like, how am I feeling today? What do I want today in this moment? And listening to that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's see. No matter how hard I try, I feel stuck. 
Stormy, I was going to answer this, but I keep hearing you. Yeah, that's so crazy. Me too. I'm like, oh, I it's my turn. <laughs> I was okay. like, it's not my question. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing. Um, even just tapping into your energy, what I can see immediately is one, there's some cleanup that needs to be done in some way, shape or form. There appears to be some kind of amends or payback that needs to be done to release this stuff. And this is also just a really big place for you to take a big jump on faith. You have got to do something so radically different and you need a teacher to walk you through it because because you're at the end of everything you know how to do to get unstuck and that's where you're supposed to be. Like that's a beautiful place to arrive because now you get to get a new life. That's a really great place and we can see it. We'll be able to see it immediately in your chart and you can confirm it with your records, right? Your records have literally said to you, this is all you've got to offer until you have someone help you open up what else you've got to offer, but you don't have that key on your own. And it's great because immediately you'll take one small practical action that is probably a suggestion you didn't choose and that you don't like, and your energy will move and you'll be like, well, what? Why did, <laughs> why did I do this forever ago? But it's usually when I see this in anybody, when it is all stuck, it is like spiritual constipation. You just need that <laughs> spiritual enema and we're going to get on with it. And I promise you, it is not as dramatic as it even sounds. It's super simple. Yay! I love that. I love that. That, <laughs> that was an awesome response. Thank you. Oh, I hope that helps. Let us know, guys. I'm looking at the chat. There's a lot of chats coming in. Um, Camila said, I've heard you can tell the records if you want to wa uh, wave the white flag on your lessons for another lifetime. Oh, gosh, that's a great question. Is there any truth to this? <laughs> Why in the hell would you want to? <laughs> you have certain soul lessons that you have already established before you incarnated that this would be the ideal time to experience them. So, could you? Yes. Would your guides rather help you work your way through the lesson while you're here and you're in it? Yes. It's just like the concept of exit points. If you, any of you have heard that, we have exit points throughout our lifetime where we can decide to cross over and just try again. Just These are sort of built-in exit points for us. And um, some of you on here have heard, I wrote about this recently where I s told the story of when I had an exit point and I'll tell you what happened guys. I remember while I was under anesthesia, I remember being in the records and my guides talking to me and I told them I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to come back here. And it was three or four years before my spiritual journey started. And I said, no more. I can't do it. This is too hard. I'm going to start again. I need a fresh start, not this. And my guides and the records kept me. My surgery was supposed to be two and a half hours long. I was under anesthesia for five and a half hours, almost six hours. And that's because my negotiations took a long time. <laughs> so my guides urged me, and I remember it clear as day, urged me to stay here because they didn't want me to start over because it was timed in a way that I needed to be here at this time. So will they, if you ask, they're going to strongly urge you to stay on your committed path because you already, you already chose what's going to make you happiest in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. We worry a lot, but we don't need to. It's just an artificial thing that's going on because you've already opted for all the things that are going to make you so happy in this lifetime. So... Thank God I came back because I wouldn't be able to talk to you right now. <laughs> I always think of those like fitness shows like Biggest Loser or Revenge Body. That's the new one where you're going and you're making these very significant changes and you do get tired. We're human, right? We're trying to live spiritually like these spiritual flowers that we are. But my humanity <laughs> gets exhausted especially when I'm trying to run on my own resource. And I'm like, I can't do one more push up. And they're like, you can. 
I assure you. <laughs> right? But it's a sacred space. We get to go with them. And this, the experience was the same for me. My guides were like, if you're really done, we'll let you be done. But we're kind of sure that you're not done. Do you, do you want to trust us? And they told me, why don't you trust us for just another six months? And we'll show you. And you know what happened in that six months? Not only did I choose to stay on a leap of faith alone, all of these soulmates showed up. And they were just very quick little touches where I felt energetically different. And I was like, okay. And I had to watch. I was very cautious and I was very skeptical. As a person who had always been able to see spirit, I was skeptical that this was going to be able to be okay. And after that six months, I remember going to sleep and I met with one of my guide and he kept spinning this wheel. And if I could answer the question on the wheel, I got to see what was completed because what they understood for me is that I'm a person who needs to see the X on the list so that I know I'm getting stuff done. And so they let me see it and it has been different ever since. Yeah. And it doesn't mean it's been easier. It just means I have the faith that I get that I'm doing something with purpose and I'm not ready to tap out. I love that. Thank you for sharing that story. Yeah, I think a lot of people are probably realizing that the spiritual journey is not the easy journey. Like, welcome to your spirituality. This is not the easiest journey. But it's the one that only the strongest souls choose to embark on. So you already have, like, when your soul decided to incarnate, it came with a suitcase, that suitcase is your body. Okay. Mm -hmm. So everything that you need, God, universe, whatever we want to call it, already gave it to you. And it's inside. Nothing external is ever going to bring you the peace, joy, love, fulfillment that you want. It's all inside. So with healing, if we start and really tap in and get connected to that heart and connected to that desire, that's where all your happiness is. And no matter what's happening externally, it won't affect your sense of peace. Mm -hmm. So you always want to come back in. Mm -hmm. um, Nora, I find I internalize others' feelings. I don't know how to disconnect from others' emotions. They hurt, I hurt. They dislike, I dislike. How can I break away from this? That's... I want to say it's partially validation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like a big part. I think you have some other stuff going on, but needing <laughs> stronger boundaries. One of the things I do to help with this is shielding. Um, it's where you just imagine you could do it right now. You just imagine a great big gold pyramid up around you. It, will help energetically you from taking on stuff that isn't yours. But also, this is just, Stormy, I feel like you're going to have more to contribute to this than I do because validation is something that needs, like, you have to look at the root cause of why you're connecting with people in that way. So it's actually the way that you're connecting, right? So we can connect intellectually or emotionally from the heart. You're connecting like all the way emotionally. And that, that connection of hold on, this isn't my stuff needs to be streamlined. You need yeah. to kind of practice with that and go, does it feel good? Like this is the logical side. We're talking left brain now or masculine side stop and go, hold on. Is this my stuff? Does it feel good for me to be taking this on? Mm -hmm. And that's a decision that you make. It's a different choice. Absolutely. So it's, it's both parts. I think it totally is. And I think, you know, it comes down to definitely learning that space where it's not about like, I hate when people say you just have to love yourself. Cause like, okay, <laughs> whatever. If I could do that, I would have just done that. Today, <laughs> right. But it is this space of why do I need to take on your stuff? What is it in me? And it is a lack of faith. It's going to be somewhere. You do not trust the universe, whatever you call it with your life. You don't. And we need to see that so that we can move just to the other side of it. And how you do that is you sit with somebody so that you can look at the alternative perspective. And then the other side is, yes, 
we're going to have to channel this masculine space where you're like, oh yeah, well, I'm concerned for you because that seems very dramatic, but I am not worried because worry is just fear. That's it. It is fear dressed up as something else. And if you're running around with all this fear, you're going to have to take on everybody's everything. And so you don't need it. So we get to switch to that masculine energy because, you know, if you've ever dealt with a lot of masculine energy, they're like, this seems like it is not problematic <laughs> for <Yeah>. me, for me. <laughs> yeah. They don't, they don't dwell on, on, in the emotional. Mm -mm. I mean, imagine being dumped into the ocean without a boat. How yeah. long could you swim? Mm -hmm. I mean, the ocean is your emotions. How long can you just stay in the feels Mm -hmm. Like, have you ever cried over an ex and like, at some point you just tell yourself, okay, enough is enough. Like I've cried <laughs> enough about this. Like <laughs> I know I have, right. At some point we just snap out of it and go, Ugh. Yeah. like, I'm actually just tired of being in this state. Yes. That's, I think, significant too, because I can't tell another person when they're going to surrender. At some point it is going to come into your consciousness that, Hey, behaving like this is exhausting me. I need something else. And where do we find ourselves? At right. the end of everything you've got to give, it's time to grab a teacher and learn a different skill, right? Like that's, that's it because it's got to come out in you. But usually we're not going to stop doing something until we're exhausted with it, right? Like that's humans. We're like, oh, this is terrible. I should keep doing it. And so we're on the floor. <laughs> and, but I do want to speak to this too real quick, Nora. What's beautiful about what you have is as you can learn a different skill to kind of streamline this, like Felicia said, you will be able to use that empathy and that deep emotionalism to work with a person because sometimes I need a person to meet me right where it hurts before I can hear mm -hmm. them say, here's a practical solution to not hurting anymore. So it's not all for naught. You know, you're not just over there absorbing everything and it's terrible. It'll get better. Yeah. With new skill. And then it's useful. Yeah, agree a hundred percent. I'm looking at Melanie's comment. Let's see. Stuck in the muck. Um, my quick answer on this is if you're doing everything the same all the time, you need to do something drastically different, drastically something that you would not even usually think about or wouldn't, I mean, you might even pray for guidance, guidance on this. Like I said, with the subconscious mind, Hey, subconscious, what could I do differently to shift this energy? And then whatever comes to you in the morning, do that. Um, but I found that with energy like this, it's because it's like a quicksand, like the same thing just keeps happening over and over again. And if you struggle, which is probably what you've been struggling, it sounds like, to get out of this energy. Don't struggle anymore. Let the energy consume you. Fall down into the energy until you hit that bottom point and go, I'm going to try this instead. Mm -hmm. So struggling is not the way to get out of it. Um, it's better to just kind of let it be whatever it's, it is for you right now. Whatever feelings you have coming up around it, let that energy come up and just accept that this is where you are right now. It takes profound strength, by the way, to just go, you know, I'm unhappy with what's happening right now, and that's okay. And that's the, actually the start of healing. If you could just stop and tell, no matter where you are in your life, mm -hmm. I'm unhappy mm -hmm. with X situation, and that's it. I'm unhappy about it, and I know it's going to change. So you always want to bring in something that's like, because you know things always change. We're in a constant state of change, right? But until then, so you feel like there's some movement, try something different. Don't have any expectations on it if you can. Just try it for fun because you want to, because it seems like it's going to be light and easy for you to do. And see how that shifts the energy for you. Yeah, absolutely. And expect clarity to come slowly, right? We're like, oh, this is the thing. I realized something and we feel like it should just happen, right? <laughs> like That's not it. Clarity comes over time. Most of our clarity planets move very, very slowly. <laughs> How the baby steps to unfold. And just like Felicia said, I am a big fan of do it different. 
you know, if you've been brushing your teeth with your right hand, do it with the left just to find out that you don't die if you brush your hand with your, you know, you brush your teeth with your left hand. Go to a different grocery store. Maybe they sell some really cool kind of bananas you don't know about. Who knows? But just get out of your own way and allow the clarity because you don't really know what clarity you have if you're only looking at the same scene over and over again. You got to get someplace else and go, ah, oh, I do have clarity. Holy crap. It's delicious. And they have cool bananas. <laughs> clarity comes in the most random places. Sometimes. Yeah. I don't know if I have clarity when I'm looking at the same old thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I also don't know what the muck is around me if I don't get a different perspective on it. Because sometimes seriously, just taking myself a different direction when I'm driving, you know, the kids to school. I come back home and I'm like, oh, I didn't see that before. Oh, I could just do that. That's the way that the guides try and help us. They're like, hey, I'm going to drop you an idea, but I need you to do something different. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy. Yeah. And if you're not changing anything externally, nothing's mm -hmm. going to shift. You have to just ch Yesterday, guys, where I'm sitting right now, it may look like my usual wall. My desk is on the opposite side of the room. I rearranged every piece of furniture in my office yesterday. Mm -hmm. And what happened after that was I went through a four hour training course that I had been lax on for the last like week and a half that I really wanted. I said I wanted to do it. The energy shift in the room, I just went, oh, got it. This is much better for me. And I locked right into it. So just change. Even moving furniture around in your house helps yeah. or and the space where I work, you know. And if you find that you have tried everything you know, it's time to grab a new teacher. That's it, right? Like it is okay to not have every answer to everything in your world. Mm -hmm. It is literally the best thing in the world for you to not know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And everybody's a teacher. Absolutely. Everybody's a teacher. You could have an interaction where somebody says something rude to you on the street and that person's your teacher. I guarantee it. That person's your teacher. You could hire a teacher. You could hear something that your child says and learn from it. It's everywhere. You just got to pay attention. Sonia. Sonia, I think we might have answered this in our previous, um, a lot of people have been asking about this. So let me know if we didn't and we'll come back to it. She was just asking about motivation. How do you jumpstart motivation? We just pretty much talked about that the last few minutes. So absolutely. Cause I want to tell you guys, this is my genuine perspective. I think that motivation is a lie. It comes and <laughs> starts. Okay. Cause this is the thing as a human, I feel like, especially I'm all spiritual, right? I'm like, I need to feel motivated to do something. What a crock of tacos. You don't have to want to do something to do it. You do not have to want to do anything to do it. You just need to take the action. And do you know how many times I've taken my little sad, bad attitude and gone to do something? And immediately I'm like, oh my God, this is so great. <laughs> you do not have to want to do something to do it. Motivation, if we wait for that, I, oh my God. I'd no. still be waiting. <laughs> I almost never have it. I would never get out of bed, actually, if I no. waited for motivation. I'm motivated about six <laughs> minutes a day, and I have a much <laughs> longer day than that. So take that for what it's worth. <laughs> yeah. This is about conditioning, guys. You have to condition yourself. You've been conditioned to respond to things a certain way. Maybe you've told yourself, like I do, oh, Felicia, it's okay if you hit the snooze like 72 times before you get up in the morning. That's okay. No, I'm conditioning myself now to get up the second my alarm goes off. And that is what I've done for the last three days in a row. I'm reconditioning myself to respond differently. Don't underestimate the power of that. These are just habits. That's it. Okay. I'm skipping some questions. If I, if the person has already asked one, I'm sorry, but we have a lot of uh, questions here. Are you okay on time stormy? Yeah, I'm rocking right along. Oh, okay. it's 11 11, y'all. <gasps> it's 10 11 here. Oh, that's a good sign. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, that's good. Which one are you looking at? 
I, I was looking at two because I'm like that. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, but Nora was like, I think the worst in every situation, just very fear based, like the other shoe is always going to drop. Right. I get that. How oh, I get that kind of living, um, Nora. <laughs> yeah. How do I take my life back? Live it, live it, live it, live it, live it. Pick up the phone and maybe they tell you that you have an extra butt cheek. Cool. That couldn't be the worst thing on the planet, right? No. Maybe. A lot Just of people it. like butt cheeks. Absolutely. If you grow an extra nipple, you are going to be somebody's like just every. You're going to be popular. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? <laughs> so here's the thing. I still do that sometimes. Like I'll be like, oh, this is clearly going to be the worst. And then I just accept that about that moment that I'm thinking that and I live the moment anyways. And I usually find out that it is never what I am thinking. That's so true. Yeah. I think it's just... Uh, let's see. Do I have a different opinion on that? Um, gosh, I so resonate Nora, by the way, with what you're saying, because Stormy knows me. I, I always respond the same way, but what I've realized in the last week or so is I've been conditioned to respond a certain way. My own history, we could go on and on about this, but in my own life, I was surrounded by people, not so much anymore, but as I was growing up, everybody, what, like Greek people, they worry a lot, <laughs> you know, they're worriers. Like, even when I go to Greece, I have to like shield and be like, okay, guys, like, let's try to stay positive because even new people that I meet, like they'll see an accident or whatever on the street and be like, oh my God, somebody died. <laughs> and we don't know, we don't know if anybody died, right? So just we're talking about conditioning can be ancestral. In my case, being Greek, that has its own set of conditioning, right? Mm -hmm. My family responds in their own paradigm of the way that they see the world. And so this stuff, in my experience, comes from childhood. So for you, that is healing that would need to happen. You need to take a look at, at that and, and like logically and emotionally and spiritually, look at it and go, why have I been conditioned? Like, where did this start? And what can I do to shift it now? The good news is because it's conditioning, what that means is it's a habit and you can break it. Absolutely. Habits Emmett can Fox, be broken. Emmett Fox talks about the uh, mental diet. Absolutely. The law of substitution is beautiful. If I think everything's terrible, what if I just stand here and think everything's great? It, it's funny that humans are that malleable, but we really truly are. And it, yep. it becomes useful, you know, and I would think too, honestly, for everybody right now, you probably are finding yourself in the space of a lot of unfamiliar territory that you're not leaving quickly. Everything looks different. Everything's unfamiliar. You're not sure. And that is the nature of the energy we're in right now. We've just had a very big planet make a move. So all of us are having to see cracks in our lives and take new structures. And that's going to be a slow process. So if you've been feeling that way, you're okay. You're right on time. You caught the right bus, you know, but that does come with, if you're naturally a fear based and conditioned person that definitely exacerbates it. Cause it's like, Oh my God, what is going on? What is happening? Am I okay? Is it okay? I'm on the path, but what's happening? And you're fine. I promise. Mm -hmm. Everything will be fine. Yeah, yeah, right. And you're, we're all in it together. <laughs> yeah. And it's not just one person, though. Everybody's seeing a lot of endings right now. There are a lot of endings going on in life. Things that you thought, you know, were working and you're seeing now that they're not working for you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of things shifting and changing. So let's see. Did I miss any? Camila had put one in at 10.08. Let's see. Um, to answer the general question on this one, why would we choose in advance to learn in such a painful way? So there's a lesson behind every learning, right? So this is soul lessons like we talked about. So that's the first part of it. However, you have free will while you're here 
to choose, like we were talking about earlier, where Stormy might respond to something differently than I'm responding to it in relationship. And it's because I have my own series of patterns and she has her own series of patterns. So how you're choosing to respond to these things are going to affect how you learn the lesson, how quickly, how long it's going to drag on. And it's only going to be when you're truly ready. That's the bottom line. You're only going to transition out of it when you're truly ready. So if, let's say you have health things going on and there are things that came in from your family as well. If you are trying um, regular medicine, we'll say Western medicine, right? And it's not working or things it's exacerbating things. Things aren't getting better for you. Maybe that's a sign to try something else. Maybe there are other elements at play here while you're doing the regular medicine route. Maybe there's another, um, you could look at Eastern medicine. You could look at Ayurveda. You could look at energy healing, trying different things, not being stuck in any one pattern, but praying for guidance on it. I'm a big advocate of prayer where I said, even program the subconscious mind before you go to bed, give it a command. Like one of your commands might be Camila, what do I do? Like subconscious mind, I want a solution to this health issue that I'm having. And I want it by the time I wake up, find me an answer. Program that before you go to bed and see what comes to you because you'll be asleep, you'll be receptive. And that solution is already inside of you it's just coming out into the present so you can ask that question and see what comes up for you tomorrow morning try it tonight or i i program myself before i take naps too i'm pro i take a lot of naps too so i'm always like doing stuff so um we answered nora's let's see um Tanea said she's still confused. <laughs> what are you confused about? Ask a specific question if um, that helps, because I can answer those too. Melanie, let's see. Riding yeah. the right bus. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, you are writing. Yeah, we're all on the right bus. Don't worry. Uh, by the way, for those of you interested, read a book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. I am like 10 pages away from being done with this book. It's incredible. Um, I think the author is Joseph Murray. You can get it on Kindle for like a couple of bucks um, on Amazon. So check out that book if you haven't already. And it, he'll actually teach you how to do what I'm talking about, which is to program your subconscious mind before you go to bed, but also during the day, almost in like a hypnotic state. And you can start to change your life with things like this. So, um, Check out that book. So Nora's co last comment. Let's see. I think it's Joseph Murray, Camila. I believe it's Joseph Murray. I don't have the book in front of me right now. But it's called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. Nora, um, it sounds like you made the right choice. So Nora's saying she had a situation with a friend recently. Um, that her friend wasn't happy that she didn't put her in her bridal party. But um, I think, honestly, I think it's normal to have some guilt around things like this, to be honest. Um, but it's about not dwelling in it and just knowing when things are your fault and when they're not your fault. And if they are your fault, making it right. So mm -hmm. doing the right thing um, and balancing that karma in this lifetime. So we're either going to balance it in this lifetime or the universe is going to show it to us on our big screen when we cross over and we get to figure out how to do it right next time. Mm -hmm. So if you have moments in this lifetime where you feel like, hey, I, I could have acted more in my integrity or, you know, whatever, go to the person and apologize and say, listen, I acted outside of my integrity don't expect forgiveness from them, but do forgive yourself yeah. um, for whatever the experience was that you had, because forgiveness is always about you, right? It's never about the other person because we're the ones that if we don't forgive ourselves and this is after you've made it right, you know, don't like go push somebody off a cliff and then try to forgive yourself without right. <laughs> making the situation right, you know? 
it has to go both ways. You have to be in karmic balance. And, and But once you know, when you can say, I did everything I possibly could to rectify this, mm-hmm. it's time for self-forgiveness. Yeah, absolutely. So. And I think that it does come down to, um, did you act in integrity? Like you've really got to go back, especially if it's still, the guilt is still there because even people pleasers don't hang on to guilt this long. There's something about the way that you acted. And sometimes the easiest way to see it is to stop, put your feet on the ground and jump into her shoes. How did you handle her? Because it's not that you didn't have her in your wedding, like whatever, it's your wedding. But how did you navigate her? which will tell you, like Felicia said, sometimes we do that. You know, it's like, "Mm, I could have done better there, right? And then you get to go just sweep up your side of the street and say, I get it. And it's not about you, right? Because at this particular moment, you're so guilty because you're holding on a piece of her that only you can give back to her. So when you go to her, it gets to be about her, right? And the way that you treated her or the way that you didn't stand in your integrity. And what it's not is not an apology for not having her in your wedding, if that's not what you wanted. But you do get to give her back the piece you took from her. I'm always guilty when I steal people's shit, (laughs) (laughs) including pieces of their soul. Yeah. Or peace of mind. That's one of the worst for me. And then there's always the people that you will apologize to and try to make it right. And they just can't receive it, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's okay. Um, And you'll learn over time that that's okay, that we're not responsible for other people's happiness. We can't be. That's one of the main ways that you'll take on other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's about knowing when to stay and when to walk away when it's something that you've done everything you've can and it's still weighing on you and you're exhausted from this situation and all of this going on. It's time to actually walk away from it and go, you know, maybe that's not when you make your final decision, but maybe that's when you walk away so you can get some clarity. So you can figure out what's going on. And this is called making space. You make space for yourself to leave that situation aside temporarily while you figure out how you feel. Mm -hmm. You don't want to drag somebody through the mud if that's what you're going through. Just like you wouldn't appreciate it if somebody dragged you through the mud if they were going through something. You give each other some space to figure out what it is you actually want. That's a beautiful thing because when you give space, um, it's, it just means I'm not going to look at this right now. I'm going to start my healing process. I'm going to go for a walk, spend some time in meditation, get some more sleep, forget about this short term until I start to feel better. And what happens is a flood of clarity Mm -hmm. will come in and it's because you made space. You gave your brain a break from thinking about that thing, like a broken record at least for me, it's like always replaying, right? Give your brain some space and clarity will come in there and keep up with your prayer. Keep up with programming the subconscious mind. But for me, I honestly, guys, like for me, if I just get more sleep, I find that it's like somebody turns on a lamp. It's like, ding, oh, I get it now. Like, but if I'm always thinking about something or pushing really hard, like in life, business or whatever, I get further and further and further away from what I actually want, yeah. from the clarity that I'm seeking. I need to step back from it 100%. And for me, this includes no social media. I just get every extra thing out of my space. And if it means I don't respond to phone calls or texts, I also do that. But then the light turns on and I go, oh, I get it. So you'll find your own routine of what it is, but it just takes some practice. You got to find your own ritual, you know? Yeah, you really do. And I call it depending on, you know, whatever you believe, whatever you call it, but I call it putting something in the God box. Cause I'm like, I need to let some spirituality and some divine healing get a hold of this while I ch- take the choke hold off of my thinking <laughs> life. And so what I do, my process is always, always, I identify it. I ask to have it put in that God box or the spiritual space. And then I get busy 
being of service to someone else because the quickest way for me to get relief is to get into you. And Felicia knows I'm a big fan of gathering up shopping carts, right? There is this act of going to your local market or going out into your world or your space and just being helpful because it'll be nice for the next person, right? I have wrangled so many shopping carts in my life, yeah. but I also live in a space that I know that that three-step process works for me every time. Yeah. So Stormy taught me that. I just routinely now pick up shopping carts on my way into the store and take them up there. And the other thing I do too is I am not going to Starbucks now, but when I was, I would buy the coffee for the person behind me and just get that gratitude train going yeah. You know, and they couldn't say thank you to me and they don't know who I am. And that's how I like it, you know, because I'm doing it just to do it. So whatever it is for you, find your routine, something that's going to shift the energy for you. So. Yeah. Humanity is very self-consuming. We're very self-centered. So when we can get other centered for even just a few minutes, it is such a great relief to us. And that is even the most humble of us. You know what I mean? It really is. So if that's something that works, service saves lives from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it starts with saving your own life, I would imagine. So awesome. Yeah. Yay. All right, guys. Well, we kept you 90 minutes. We will let you go. <laughs> if you would like to work with either one of us, just go check out our websites. We're going to post the replay to this video too. Um, but if you want to jot it down, my website is FeliciaMarieG.com. Thank you so much for being on the call with us today. I'll let Stormy say her piece too. Yeah, thank you guys. This has been awesome. I think it's neat to see um, spiritual things come together in practical action because that's when it's actually useful. Because if you could just meditate yourself better, you would have done it already. Um, so practical action is a key. But my website is stormygrace.com and you can also come find me on YouTube at Stormy Grace. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. We will see you on our next call. It was so great talking to all of you. Thanks for showing up on a Sunday and have a great rest of the weekend. Lots of love. Bye. <laughs>